Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to part five of building a Rook Mark I. This is my Fabrico kit. In the previous video, we talked about the Rookery, mounting the Rookery, hot end, all that kind of stuff. In this episode, we're actually gonna be looking at the wiring, which is my favorite, and the extruder. So the Fabrico kit uses a Sherpa mini extruder if you're using the Fabrico files, they already have a mount on their frame to mount the Sherpa Mini. If you're building a Rook with the normal MK1 parts, I have made a little adapter for the back so that you can mount a Sherpa Mini on the back if you want to use a Sherpa Mini. Otherwise, you're just gonna have your BMG clone extruder, your black uh, clone extruder. And normally those will come with like a mounting plate and you can mount it anywhere on the back or sides or whatever, wherever you would like. So this is a really simple plastic mount that just bolts into the provisions that I have all along on the side and the back of the frame. Again, you can put that wherever you like. And then the Sherpa Mini actually just mounts there like so. Something to note, if you are building a Fabrico kit or you're using the Sherpa Mini in a Bowden configuration, you do need to make sure that you're getting the Bowden version of the Sherpa Mini. To find that, you wanna to go to the Sherpa Mini's GitHub, download the complete GitHub for the Sherpa Mini, and you will see a user's mod folder. The user's mod folder has a different center section that has a Bowden provision in it so that we can put this black collet on there. So that's something to note if you're looking for the Bowden version of the Sherpa Mini. And like I say, that is just gonna simply mount on here with two screws right into some heat sets. And then that's all secure there. You can cut your Bowden tube to length and mount it onto that. For the Bowden tube, generally you wanna have the shortest Bowden tube you can with full range of the tool head. So you know, I might actually cut something like that off of the Bowden tube so that I can get the shortest possible length. It might even be shorter than that. The shorter the Bowden tube you can get, the less retraction you need. So you wanna to try to get your retraction down as low as possible when printing. So for wiring, wiring is relatively straightforward on a printer. Most main boards are kind of labeled, you know, bed thermistor, hot and thermistor, XY motor, that type of thing. So for the tool head, generally on my kit, what I've done is I've taken my two 4010 fans, I've cut the end off. You can use heat shrink, you can do whatever you like here. I'm just using electrical tape just to make this really quick. Um, I'm usually really bad at wiring. I wanna just get the printer printing and I don't put a lot of effort into the wiring. You do whatever you would like. So I've cut my 4010 fans and I've combined them together into one cable. I've extended the cable here onto a single connector so that we can plug our layer cooling fans into one port. For our hot end fan, again, I've cut the end off and I've extended it into a connector so that I have both my fans here. The Fabrico kit, the hot end comes with some connectors here so you can extend the wires out already, which is perfect. And they already have ends on them. The hot end has these terminal ends and the thermistor has a plug that will plug into the uh, SKR uh, board on the bottom here. So pretty straightforward. I like to label my wires too, you know, so that you know which ones are your layer cooling fan, which one is your hot end fan, that type of thing, so you don't get them mixed up. You always can swap the connectors after, but labeling them will save yourself a little bit of time. So I'm gonna change the camera angle here and we'll go to actually plugging all the wires in. Before we should do that, I should mention, when you're looking at the front of the printer, this is your B motor and this is your A motor. Generally, the B motor will plug into your X port on your main board and your A motor will plug into the Y port on your main board. So let's flip the printer upside down and let's take a look at the wiring. Okay, here we are on the bottom of the Rook. The front of the Rook is right here. So 
I know on this side here, which is the left hand side, if you're looking straight at the printer, is my B motor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my B motor cable and we are going to plug that into the X port, which is usually always your first port on your stepper driver row. So I can see this as XM for X motor. We're then going to take our right hand motor and we're going to plug that into Y. So again, pretty straightforward. We're just going to plug that into Y. Next, we want to do our Z motor. So my Z motor cable here. So on the SKR E3 Mini version 3 board, there are two Z motor ports. These share the same driver. So it doesn't matter if you plug the Z motor into this one or this one, it will work just fine. If you're running two Z motors, you can plug in two motors here and run them. They will run at the same time. So just know these are not independent Z motor ports. They share the same driver. And then finally at the very end here we have our extruder. And I will just find my extruder wire here and we'll plug that in at the very end, just like so. So very straightforward, there's our motor wires all plugged in. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Z end stop. So here we have the Z end stop, which is just mounted down in the bottom here. And the Z end stop is usually always at the last here on your row of end stop ports. So we're simply gonna plug that in just like so. Next, what we can do is we can start wiring up our thermistors. So I'll grab the thermistor here for my hot end, which is this one right here, already has a connector on the end. So thermistor is right at the end here. It'll usually say like TH0, so thermistor zero, hot end zero. So we're gonna plug that in there. And then we might as well do our bed thermistor at the same time here. So I'll go ahead and grab that. So here's our bed thermistor. Generally it will say THB. So that's the next port right here, THB for our bed thermistor. Then all we really need to do is we need to plug in our fans. So generally, on most configurations, the first fan port is usually your layer cooling fans. And we'll test that when we get into the clipper setup part, but usually the first port is your layer fans. So we'll go ahead and plug those in. And then the next port after that is your hot end fan. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. We need to configure sensorless homing and we need to add some jumpers to do that. Okay, for sensorless homing on this board, it's a little tricky to see, but we have three sets of pins here. We have our diag pins for X, Y, and Z. The Rook uses sensorless homing for X and Y. So we need to put a jumper on the X diag and the Y diag pins. So I'm gonna grab my jumpers that came with my board and we're basically just gonna plug them in just like so for X and for Y. Because we do not have an X and Y end stop, this just tells the board that we are actually gonna be using sensorless homing. So the final step that we have here is to actually power up our bed, our hot end, and our main board. So on the SCAR Mini E3, we have our power in. This is 24 volts in. And generally the bottom here pin is ground and the 24 volt is at the top here. Check your board's pinout for the polarity. 
You wanna triple and double check this and make sure you do not get these reversed. For the Fabrico kit, you're generally gonna get a uh, Morrison power supply that you're gonna actually wire into this power. For a DIY build, if you're self-sourcing, what I like to use is I like to use a AC adapter, so a 24 volt, eight amp AC adapter. And I will put one of these XT60 ends on the AC adapter and I'll put an XT60 wire coming out here. That way I can plug the two in. This will take way more than eight amps and it won't get warm or anything like that. That's the simplest way to wire a printer like this is just feed in the 24 volts directly into the printer right from an AC adapter. Or if you have a 24 volt power supply, you'll run from the 24 volt line into the actual uh, board itself. So that is our power connector here on the corner. It's facing an, a different orientation than the rest. Next, we have the connectors here for the hot end and bed. These here are for the bed and these here are for the hot end. There is no polarity for a heater. So we can take our hot end and we can simply just undo these screws. So you can see just like that, nice and secure. And then we're gonna just do the same for the heated bed. Like I say, polarity does not matter on the heaters. So we just take our two wires here, loosen these connectors up and put the wires in. And there we go. We have our bed wired in, we have our hot end wired in, and then you'll have power coming in here. And our wiring for the Rook is complete. All right, so wiring on the Rook is done. We have mounted our Bowden extruder here, and we are ready to go ahead and flash clipper in the next episode. So we're gonna flash clipper onto this board. We're gonna grab the Rook 2020 or the Rook MK1 config file. And then we'll go through the config file a little bit and we'll do some testing on making sure everything's working well. So thanks everyone for watching. If you'd like to support my uh, channel, definitely check out the link to my Patreon. We have a lot of cool stuff coming out on there. And thanks everyone, like, share, and subscribe.